Hello everyone, welcome to video 4 in the C-Star Roundup series. As you know, the C-Star Roundup is a group that anyone can join and in this group we collaborate to image targets with our C-Stars. I pick a target each month and then we all collaborate and get as much data as we can on that target and by doing that we can collect a lot more data than any single individual can and we can get better images with our C-Stars. Having a new target each month also keeps us motivated to go out there and use our C-Stars. The target I had selected for last month, which was September 2024, was the Bubble Nebula. And I have stacked all of that data into a single raw stacked TIFF file. And that's available for all of you to download as well. And you can process along if you like. Everyone gets slightly different results and I'm always excited to see what, uh, what you would get with this data. For instructions on how to transfer data from your C star to the computer, check out the link in the description of this video or check out the previous video. Now to get started, here is how to upload the data from your computer onto the server so that it reaches me. Once you have copied the files over from the C star to your computer, we need to zip up all of these files to upload them. So simply select all of the files. On Windows, we can do that by hitting Control A to select all of the files, then simply right clicking and clicking Compress to Zip File. And that will compress all of the files into one zip folder that we can upload. Once you have the zip file, you can click on the link in the description of this video and that will take you to this page. Now you simply hit Select Files and select that zipped folder and click open. Now you simply need to type in your first and last name so we can give you proper credit for the files you submitted. And then simply hit upload. And as soon as you see this confirmation screen saying upload has finished, you are all done. Now, if you've downloaded the stacked raw file, it'll look something like this. It'll be titled result.bubblenebula.cstar.17hours.fit. So I will drag and drop this file into Cyril, which I have open here in the background. So just drag and drop over there. So right now, as usual, uh, the image looks very, very dark, but that's fine. That's because it's in a linear state. We will go down here where it says linear and we will uh, select auto stretch. And that, as you can see right away, gives us a pretty, pretty nice looking image. And you know, there's a good amount of data in the background here. You can see some of that red nebulosity uh, around the bubble nebula. And at the bottom, you can also see this large open cluster. The first step we're gonna do for the actual processing part is to crop the image. There's a bit more noise in the very corners and that is because of field rotation due to the Altaz mount. But since we have a lot of data, it's not, not really a big issue but I would still want to crop the image a little bit. Uh, so let's say just, just drag your cursor around to crop to whatever size you want. Um, I, I'd like it to be something like, like this. I do want to keep um, that, uh, that cluster at the very bottom. So once we've selected the area that we want to keep, you just right click and click crop and that crops our image and gets rid of most of the of the issues at the very edges of the frame. But again, when we display the image uh, in its final form, the background will be darker, so you wouldn't notice any minor issues that are still left. So the second step is to do background extraction to even out any inconsistencies in the background. So we go to image processing, background extraction, and you don't really need to do anything over here. Just click generate and see what it looks like. Uh, the only thing to watch out for is that you don't want any of these red boxes to be on the nebulosity or on a bright star. And if you do find that uh, a lot of these boxes are on some nebulosity or a bright star, uh, then you can, you can fix that by decreasing this value, which is the grid tolerance. Try that again, see? It got rid of some of them that were on the brighter nebulosity. We don't want those there. Okay, so yeah, there is very, very little nebulosity in the outer regions where the boxes are. And yeah, the cluster is pretty good as well. Now we just click Compute Background. And click Apply. And let's see what that did. So before, after, before, 
after. So that evened out the background a little bit. Now next step we're going to do is color calibration. So we go to image processing, color calibration, and photometric color calibration. Now here we want to select what object that is. So you can just click here and type in bubble nebula or you can also type in the Messier number or the NGC number. So once that shows up down here, just click OK at the bottom. There we go. So that is the more accurate color for this region. OK, next we are going to deconvolve the image, which means we're going to make it a little bit sharper. So go up to image processing again, go to deconvolution and we will leave everything as is uh, as a default. Just click generate PSF. There we go. And all we need to do here is click apply. The default settings should work pretty well. Now we can click close. We can uh, check it before and after. Yeah, not a huge difference, but it does make a slight difference, slightly sharpens the image. Now, next we are going to stretch this image because right now, if we go to the bottom and select linear, this is what the image actually looks like. We go to image processing and click generalized hyperbolic stretch transformation. Now on this window, the first thing we want to do is move this stretch intensity, local stretch intensity, all the way to the right, which is the maximum of 15. Now we'll come up here and uh, we will magnify this histogram down here. So we type in 100 and hit enter. And now we can see that the histogram is, is very, very far left because the image is very dark. Now we just click somewhere in the middle of this histogram right underneath this peak. It doesn't have to be perfect, but somewhere under there is fine. So when I click that, you can see on the right, this value pops up for symmetry point. And now you grab the stretch factor, this top lever, and we start increasing the brightness there. And you don't want it to be too bright, so just stop once you start seeing the nebula, and now start decreasing the stretch intensity a little bit until the contrast looks pretty decent. We can also set the symmetry point by using this dropper. So what we can do is find the, the faintest area of nebulosity that you care about and make a little rectangle around that. Uh, make sure there are no bright stars in there and then just click on this dropper over here and it will automatically set a good symmetry point for you. So that looks pretty, pretty good. Click apply, now click reset and now we're going to do the same thing again. Now, instead of being zoomed into 100 times, we will click this one to zoom back in to just one X and we can reset this panel. And now we're going to do the same thing again. Click right underneath the peak of this histogram here. That brings up the symmetry point value. And now we can start again. So increase local stretch intensity back to maximum and start adjusting the stretch factor to make the image brighter. So adjust it until you're happy with the brightness of the background and now start decreasing the local stretch intensity. And this should increase the contrast a little bit. So just do them in little steps like that. And the symmetry point, now you can adjust that here as well very accurately. So as you can see, that looks pretty good. The background is pretty dark. I'll increase the stretch factor again a little bit more. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. We will click apply again and click close. So now we can just click anywhere to get rid of that, uh, that old box that was there. Now at this point, if there is any green noise in the image, we can click on image processing and remove green noise and just click apply. But in this case, there really isn't much. Uh, let's undo and redo before, after, before, after. Yeah, very subtle difference, but uh, yeah, we'll keep that. And next we're gonna adjust the color saturation. So we'll go to image processing, color saturation. And over here, we'll slowly adjust the slider. And if the background is very noisy or has a lot of color noise, you can use this background factor slider. So if you increase this slider, any noise in the background will decrease. And if we want to make any final adjustments, we can go to image processing and histogram transformation. By adjusting this middle lever, we can adjust the contrast of the image. 
yeah i think that that is looking pretty good to me so i will click apply click close now the last step is to save the image so i go up here to this bottom facing arrow click on that and i like to save the image first as a tiff file tiff -F, in case you want to do more editing at some later point and you can name it whatever you want but um, yeah i'll i'll save that and um, I like to save the final processed image as a 16-bit unsigned integer so it doesn't take that much space. Click save and now we want to save it as a JPEG as well just for sharing with family and friends. So go back up here, click on this downward facing arrow again and then you can just switch the file format to JPEG. And I always save at 100% quality. And now this is the final JPEG image. To me, this is an excellent image. You can see the actual bubble. You can see this envelope of hydrogen gas around. And you can see this beautiful open star cluster near the bottom. Uh, and the colors of the stars here are pretty well preserved as well. So, uh, yeah, if you want to download that data and process it yourself and see what kind of results you get, uh, yeah, that would be awesome. I would love to see your results. And if you post them online anywhere, on social media um, for example on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook uh, you can tag me at Abdur Astro and All Star Telescope and um, yeah then that'll notify us that you've shared your image and we would love to see it and see what kind of results you can get as well and uh, again I want to thank everyone who sent in some data and here are the participants for this time yeah, so if you have a C star get out there and get some data and let's see what we can do together the next target which is the target for October 2024 has already been announced and that is the galaxy ngc 891 the silver sliver galaxy and the reason i chose this galaxy is because it has this this beautiful edge on shape with a bright nucleus and it's also very well positioned in the northern hemisphere right now so i think this should be an excellent target for our sea stars so once you've got the data on that galaxy, be sure to submit it before October 31st, 2024, and then I will make another video processing that data as well. Thanks again for watching and clear skies.